it occurred to me then, and it struck me many times since, that every nation, like every individual, has a darker side and a lighter side. And the easiest thing for a politician to do is to appeal to our hatred and our bigotry and our fear, you know, and our xenophobia and, you know, our mistrust of immigrants or whatever. And that every once in a while, you know, politicians like my dad come along who, um, who have a different approach, which is to uh, get people, persuade people one way or another to transcend their narrow self-interest and see themselves as part of a community, as part of a, a larger adventure, you know, and, and be willing to take risks for neighbors who don't look like them because they feel like they're part of something important, you know, part of maybe reconstructing our country and making it live up to its promises and, and, and to avoid the seduction of the notion that we can advance ourselves as a people by leaving our poor brothers and sisters behind. And my dad was able to do that successfully. And I think, you know, that we have that opportunity now. And, you know, I, you know, that's why I, my father was able to do something that made people find the hero in themselves, you know, people to take risks, because it takes a risk to make a sacrifice or to believe in your community. And my dad was able to do that. And, you know, I would, I would like to be able to do that to this country, for this country. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's the only way that we're going to save this country if people can find a way to unify, you know, people from the left and the right and to build the kind of populist movement that my father was able to build in 1968.